Yeah, hi guys, I'm going to be discussing the problem of the day 424. Uh, without further ado, uh, let me introduce the problem. Uh, so two thin coaxial current carrying solenoids are located distance L from each other. One coil has a radius of R and N1 turns, and the other coil has a radius of R and N2 turns, a little r, and assume that little r is much less than big r. So let's draw a picture of this. So there's going to be one coil that's like this, and another coil that's like this, and they're not going to have very, they're not going to be very thick or have a very big length. They're just going to be approximately circular regions because they're thin, as specified in the problem. And they're coaxial, they have this common axis, and they carry some current. So this would be R and one, and this would be big R and two. And they share the same, uh, they are a difference of L from each other. And you want to find the force of mutual interaction between both solenoids given that this solenoid carries a current of I1 and this solenoid carries a current of I2. Sorry, this one is N1. Mix that up. So yeah, this is going to be our problem and the easiest way is just going to be finding out how to calculate the magnetic field. And magnetic field plays a big part in this uh, because you can calculate the force on a wire loop because of the formula I times L, the vector quantity of length times magnetic field. And if you can find the perpendicular component, you can look at one of the solenoids and you know that it has n turns and its length r or something magnetic magnetic field will be perpendicular to this so then all you have to do is multiply after you find the magnetic field perpendicular contribution so we can do this immediately uh know that biot savard law we're going to use that which is essentially this so the infinitesimal quantity of the magnetic magnetic field is going to be uh mu zero i over four pi and then you multiply this by dl times the vector quantity r hat over r squared and if we if we assume that it is at an angle of r phi so let's draw this we have something like this so at a distance l is per se we have this then we have what we have you can draw these and we have far five like this it's going to be R and it's going to be D far five and then this entire loop here is going to be the DL quantity and the current of I is going to be moving through this and if you say that rho is the distance between this point and the L height over here and to a point on disk then we have something like that so then, since the row is directed to at an angle of r phi, then we make this cosine of r phi term, and we know from this picture there's going to be right triangles. We know that cosine of r phi is just going to be r over rho, so you have this formula. Now we're just going to integrate through like this. Since we've already separated the variables to this type of differential equation, what we have to do is now integrate to find the total magnetic field contribution. Now on the right side, we all we have is the integral of dl, the infinitesimal length 
element and that's just going to be the circumference of the wire loop so 2 pi r and now we just uh, put this all together we have this formula that's given to us after some mathematical simpl simplifications and since it's a perpendicular magnetic component and that's made of n1 loops so we're this entire time we're considering uh, the bigger loop again once again then this bigger loop is going to have n1 turns so magnetic field is just going to be n1 times b since it's not that big so then you have this formula now we can find the perpendicular component if we construct the cylinder of length uh, of length delta l so hmm, we know that by gauss's law the flux has to become zero in this fire loop so this is going to be the magnetic flux at this upper top magnetic flux at the bottom and then this is going to be the magnetic magnetic flux through the entire circumference and the sum of all of these have to become to zero we, we can apply a simple linear approximation for the b parallel of l plus delta l which is going to be b of parallel of l plus b of parallel of delta l and with this you can do a bit of simplification and you can find that b perpendicular of l is going to be this component and we can add a limit of delta l to zero of this so this is going to turn into essentially the derivative of the magnetic field with respect to dl and you multiply with this component too so upon doing that you get this formula for the perpendicular magnet magnetic component and now this is all you need to do now that we know that the perpendicular component we can simply apply this formula again since b perpendicular is uh, perpendicular to itself to l at any point all you do is multiply all of these for that for the small wire loop of 2 pi r and you get this formula now there's another way that you can do this problem uh, that is name, namely mutual inductance since the two wire loops contain um, that they're, they're mutually attracted to each other so they have mutual inductance so if we consider the flux through one of these um, solenoids you can see that this will be the flux and then we already calculated the perpendicular parallel component in the previous so you have this formula for the magnetic flux and then you we know once again that the mutual inductance is just the flux over the current so we have this formula now we consider the total energy and we, we consider the energy because taking the derivative of energy with respect to x will give us the force so we know this is the total energy of all the solenoids we where l1 and l2 were just the, in their own um their own inductances now we know that by taking the derivative of de dl the these two components don't even matter because they don't have any dl components or length components in them so all you get is this formula now so we just have to calculate dmdl and that is easy with a straightforward derivative you get this formula and just plugging in we get the same formula as the previous solution which is cool now one last one last method that you can do but i'm not going to talk about in this video is you can use uh, you can think of the solenoids as magnetic dipoles 
end there will be magnetic dipoles directed like this and you can find the formula for the, um, the force between these two dipoles when they're oriented at different angles or you could refer to either Purcell or Griffiths with highs which both have f problems based on the de the general force between two magnetic dipoles and then these two dipoles will of course be a distance of L from each other. So then you can do the same type of calculations upon finding the dipole moment and you can get that the force will be the same thing. So anyways, I hope that video helped and thanks for watching.